Well, good evening. Good Wednesday evening, everybody. And um, welcome to Common Ground Bible Study, Heritage Baptist Church, our Wednesday night Bible study. And we appreciate the opportunity that we have to open the Word of God. Brother Arthur, good to see you. And again, we'll wait a few minutes to make sure everybody gets online, get started. But uh, we're starting a new lesson tonight <clears throat> in our Bible study. And uh, we've got a memory verse and a lesson verse that we'll get started with in just a minute or two. But just want to remind everybody that uh, we do have our services online and uh, on Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and Wednesday evening. Our preacher's preaching, and then uh, every other night of the week is a face. Book live by our brother Matt um, and uh, brother David. We do something at seven o'clock every night. Every yeah, you know, every night. So don't, don't forget to log into that. And uh, hey, Kana, thanks for joining us. Hey, Lisa, good to have you tonight. Just wait a minute or two. Just get people a chance to log on before we get started. Try to get started here just in a minute or two. But uh, we're starting on a lesson tonight about personal worship and uh, you know, praise and worship. And, but, uh, you know, praise and worship is a personal thing. And hopefully we learn some things from God's Word tonight as we open the book and study from it, as we should be doing ourselves anyway. But, uh, We'll go ahead and, uh, and get started, but if you open your Bibles to Hebrews in chapter 10, verse 25, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, familiar verse, but it says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, and even more so as you see that day approaching. And uh, we need to be uh, careful uh, that we assemble as we should. And of course, these times that we live in, we're not able to assemble together as a group but we can't assemble around uh, the modern technology that we have and uh, assemble around the, the Word of God and uh, be faithful in doing that. And, hope, and hopefully people are faithful to do that. If it's not live, they, we go back and listen to the messages that are taught and preached. And uh, hopefully God will be able to use that in your heart and life as we try to work through this time uh, of being isolated uh, from each other. I thank Lord for family that we can gather together with uh, daily. Um, but it's, uh, I miss seeing people face to face and fellowshipping with those uh, brothers and sisters in Christ that we normally would see on a weekly basis. But uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, uh, but we need to be faithful to, to gather together. Uh, our lesson uh, verse, talking about personal praise and worship, Verses Psalm chapter 9 and verse 1 and 2. And it says, I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. So uh, we're going to talk about praise and worship, and uh, of course, in a, in a personal way. And uh, hopefully we'll learn something today that we, uh, that we need to learn from God's word. The Word of God is always profitable. If we'll spend the time to get something out of it, uh, God has something for us if we'll, if we'll be faithful to stay in His Word. But uh, by way of introduction, you know, we, uh, we uh, have uh, sports favorites. We, we're fans. A lot of us are sports fans. Uh, we have a favorite player. Uh, you know, and or we have uh, somebody that uh, an entertainer uh, that we like and we follow, celebrities or whatever. And uh, some people have posters on their walls. And, you know, as young people growing up, we put posters on our walls about people that we liked. And uh, we're fans uh, in a lot of different ways. You know, we wear T-shirts and jerseys uh, of our favorite team and, and hats, uh, showing their emblems and. We buy our favorite player's shoes, and we do a lot of different things, and people spend thousands of dollars 
on personal items or collectibles, uh, hit records, and baseball cards, whatever it may be. And uh, we spend thousands of dollars in uh, enjoying. Yeah, Isaac was just saying uh, when he was small, he had a uh, had, had uh, those cardboard figures, full size figures of Michael Jordan and Larry Bird, and you know uh, they were they were awesome to have those things of of uh, good uh, professional basketball players. But you know, uh, some people even get to the point of idolizing uh, human ce celebrities. As though, as though they're something uh, more special than anybody else. And, uh, you know, a lot of times they end up even worshiping uh, human beings, as it would, idols. That's why they're called idols. Uh, but, you know, as Christians, God has to have first place uh, in our life and in our heart. And uh, in the heart of a, of a believer, Jesus Christ needs to be our idol. He needs to be our hero, our God. And we don't need to uh, love anything else above him. We don't need to praise things uh, and put our uh, loyalties or, uh, above Christ. And so we need to be careful about these human idols, these celebrities that we, that we worship. Um, and we're, we need to be careful. It's so important that we put God first and, and foremost in our lives, give him preeminence in everything that we do and everything we say. But uh, let's uh, open <clears throat> in a word of prayer and we'll continue on with the lesson. Let's pray. Father, we are so thankful, Lord, for your goodness to us, uh, for your grace and mercy. We thank you for salvation that you provided. As uh, Lord Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, was buried and rose again the third day that we might have life. And we thank you for that. And I pray, Lord, tonight that uh, you use the word of God and the Holy Spirit to speak to hearts and lives. And Lord, uh, if there is someone that's not saved that's listening tonight or will hear the recording, and that you just get a hold of their heart, Lord, help them to see their need of salvation. So they don't miss out on, on heaven. They don't miss out on the e eternal life, but uh, they don't miss out on the, uh, the abundant life that you've promised us here on earth as well. So would you bless the lesson, bless everything that's said and done, might be done for your honor and for your glory. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we were talking about a praise and worship, a, a personal worship uh, in the Christian's life. And uh, we, we need to praise God more. We don't thank God enough. We don't praise him enough uh, for what he's done for us. He's been so good to us. And, uh, you know, God is good all the time, not just when things are good in our life, not just when things happen the way we think they should, but God's good all the time. But we need to worship God. We need to praise him and honor him and glorify him our church a theme for the year is glorifying God and we need to glorify God always uh, but, uh, but what are the ways that we worship and praise God in uh, in Revelation in chapter 5 Revelation chapter 5 uh, starting in in verse 11 and it says and I behold I beheld heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Uh, we need to praise God. We need to worship God. We need to glorify Him. We need to honor Him in everything that we do. Um, you know, John here spoke as, as the Holy Spirit revealed to him these things uh, of the angels worshiping and praising God. But it's a picture of what we need to do uh, in our daily lives. We need to worship and honor and praise Him. Uh, in Isaiah, in chapter 45, verse 23, and Romans chapter 14, and verse 11, and Philippians chapter 2, verse 11, and uh, you know, just uh, by way of introduction, again, we'll, we'll look at a lot of verses tonight, and if you're uh, watching live, uh, write, write them down and go back and look to them, uh, look at them later, and study them if you, if you can't keep up. Uh, if you're watching the recording, maybe you can put it on pause and look them up as we go through these. <clears throat> but a lot of verses, and we won't look these three up, but 
Uh, those three verses, the references that I gave you, talk about every knee shall bow and every tongue confess to God that Jesus Christ is Lord. And in Philippians it says, to the glory of God the Father. To the glory of God the Father. We glorify God when we, uh, when we bow the knee, uh, when we confess with the tongue uh, to God and to others that he is God. Uh, we glorify him. And we need to do that. We need to glorify God. You know, <clears throat> we, uh, we can do that now uh, if you're a Christian. Uh, spend the time glorifying God. Uh, or we can wait till we get to heaven. If you're not saved, uh, it'll be at the great white throne of judgment uh, that we'll bow the knee and we'll confess with the tongue that Jesus Christ is God uh, to his glory. And I pray that uh, if you're not saved tonight, you'll make that decision before it's too late. But in only salvation, only, only in salvation is the difference. And we need to glorify God now uh, while we have breath. We need to glorify him and not wait till we have to stand before him and give an answer. Not before we stand before him and, and are judged uh, because we've rejected him our lot, in our, uh, our life. We need to glorify him now. We need to praise him now. And so it's important that we praise God, that we worship him, and, uh, and not just in church. But uh, as we go through the lesson, we see, first of all, uh, the purpose of creation uh, was to honor and glorify God. Uh, that's why he created things. In Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 tells us that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But for what purpose did God create everything? If you look in Revelation again, Revelation chapter 4 should be on the same page if you were already in Revelation chapter 5. In Revelation <clears throat> chapter 4 and verse 11, it says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. You know, everything was created uh, to glorify the Creator. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of things uh, that we think about that people make, uh, they, they glorify the, pe the people that made them. You know, if you go to a craft uh, show or something, you see all these crafts that people make, and you, and you ooh and awe over them, and you want to know who made them. And uh, so they, they glorify the maker. Well, uh, God is no different. God created the heavens and the earth so that we might glorify him. Uh, they, he created them for his pleasure, he says, that they were created. Um, they were created to glorify him. Uh, to glorify, of course, means to praise or worship. Uh, and honor, of course, means to esteem highly or, uh, or to give a place of great value. Uh, and we need to glorify and honor God with our, with our, with our mouths as we realize that, that he created all things for his own pleasure. Uh, for his honor, for his glory. In uh, Psalms chapter 19 and verse 1, uh, that uh, the heavens declare the glory of God. Uh, all of creation automatically glorifies the Creator. You know, we talked about in our last uh, lesson, worship, uh, knowing God, and we can know, God, know there is a God through creation. That's because all of creation glorifies God. It reflects Him. And it praises him. And, uh, you know, it's interesting uh, why all of creation praises God, worships him. But why don't humans do that as we should? We're part of God's creation. Um, the answer, of course, is found in our hearts. Where sin, self, and Satan uh, daily receive worship instead of God. Jeremiah, in chapter 17, verse 9, tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Uh, our fleshly heart uh, doesn't follow God. It's not normal. It's not uh, uh, commonplace for the human heart to glorify God. It's not until the person gets saved and, and receives the Lord Jesus into their heart and life that they can glorify and praise God. Um, <clears throat> Uh, we, you know, we have a choice uh, as Christians. Uh, we have a choice whether or not we're going to honor, honor God and glorify him. God gives us a choice. And uh, we need to make sure we take advantage 
of that choice, of that opportunity. Uh, how, do we, how do we do that? How do we do that? Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8, <clears throat> Matthew chapter 15 and verse 8 says, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Their heart is far from me. You know, we see a lot of uh, visual honor and glory, worship, so-called worship, uh, people's mouths and, and, and lips as they try to honor and glorify God, whether it be through song or preaching or whatever it may be. Uh, but that verse says that they honor me with their lips. Uh, they draw nigh to me with their mouths, but their heart is far from me. And you know, if you look at the very next verse in verse 9, and it says, in vain they do worship me. If we're, if we're worshiping God with our, with our mouth and with our lips, and our heart is not in the right place, it says we worship him in vain. In vain. Worship needs to come from the heart. Uh, Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 says, For as, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know, our heart is the, the core of, of what we are. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, how well we sing or what we say or even uh, what people think about us. What matters is the heart. It matters what God knows about your heart. And, you know, when we stand before him in judgment, that's what's going to matter, what God knows about our heart. What have we done with Jesus in our heart? Have we accepted him as our personal Savior or have we re rejected him? And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done in church, uh, in front of people. Uh, what matters is the heart. Chapter 16, verse 7, it says, The Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. God looks at the heart. And he knows if our worship, if our praise is real, uh, or if it's just lip service. He knows if it's real. And we need to make sure that our, our worship uh, is real. We need to make sure that our honor and our glory to him is real. Uh, real worship uh, comes from the heart. Also, if you look in, uh, in Luke chapter uh, 10 and verse 2, you know, uh, we, we need to honor God with our heart, our soul, and our mind. Luke chapter 10 and verse 27 says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. We need to love him with all of our heart, all of our mind, our soul, our strength, and our mind. Now, that's how we worship him. We love him. Uh, we're going to keep his commandments, the Bible says. Do we love God? Do we, do we love him enough to worship him uh, with our heart, our soul, and our mind? Uh, we need to worship God with everything that we have. Uh, that, that's what makes up our attitude, our heart, our soul, and our mind uh, make up our attitude. And we'll talk about attitude in, in a few minutes. Uh, but what, uh, what do you, what do you, how do you worship God? Do you worship God with your mouth and your lips? Or do you worship God with your heart? soul and your mind let's worship god like we ought to you know uh we need to we need to uh, love god and and glorify him in our, in our worship uh, exodus and, and chapter 20 of course where the ten commandments are it says, it says we need to love god first we don't need to have any other gods before us but also in exodus chapter 34 uh exodus chapter 34 and verse 14 it says him only shalt thou worship. Uh, you know, thou shalt worship no other God before him. He's the one that we need to worship. We don't need to worship any other. In chapter 4, uh, in verse 10, it says, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Worship him, and he says, and him only that shalt thou serve. Because worship and service go together. Just as uh, we know that love is, a, is not, just, it's not just a word, it's an action word. When you love someone, you show that love. You don't just say it. Uh, if, you, if you don't show it, it's not real love. Right here it says that worship and, and service are uh, hand in hand. If we're not serving God like we need to, uh, we can't 
worship him like we need to. Yeah, if we don't serve God faithfully, uh, we can only worship him with our lips. And if we're going to worship him with our heart, we need to serve God. And it also tells us, and finally, in Matthew chapter 25, and verse 21, uh, that we worship God with our faithfulness. Faithfulness uh, in serving God uh, with our talents and our gifts. It talks about in Matthew chapter 25 and verse 21. Uh, we need to worship him. Worship Are we faithful to serve God like we need to? Uh, we've talked about uh, the talents and, uh, and gifts of the Holy Spirit. And uh, that's what we need to use to worship God. We need to be faithful in using those talents that he's given us. Faithful to do exactly what he's called us to do each and every day to worship God. Worship God with our faithfulness. You know, if we're not glorifying God with our life, if we're not serving God faithfully, uh, there's only two other possibilities uh, of people that are being worshipped. And what are those? John chapter 8, verse 44 tells us about those that have not accepted the Lord Jesus as their personal Savior. It says, You are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. You don't have a choice. If you're not saved tonight, you are of your father the devil, and you cannot worship and praise God. You don't have a choice. Uh, salvation brings freedom of choice. We're free from the bonds of sin, free from the bondage that we've we're once in, and we're free to make a choice to worship God or not. And as Christians, that's the choice that we need to make on a daily basis. Uh, we need to worship God. We need to worship Him with our heart, with our soul, our mind. And we need to worship Him faithfully with our service. So let's be faithful to, to worship God uh, because of what He's done for us. He's done so much. But the purpose of uh, that's the purpose, purpose of creation is to honor and glorify God the, the reason he created us is to worship him is to glorify him to honor him that's why we were created that's why he created the earth so that everything in it could worship and glorify him to worship, or the purpose of salvation also the purpose of salvation is to enable us to honor and glorify God you know beyond of course the uh, forgiveness of sins that we have in uh, an eternity in heaven, uh, eternal life, and the abundant life here, it gives us the ability uh, to honor and glorify God by our salvation. That salvation that he's given us, the free gift uh, of eternal life. Because of that, he enables us to honor and glorify him. And uh, we need to be faithful to do that. Jesus came to reclaim the sinners from their sin that we might honor and glorify God. Uh, Ephesians in chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 6. Uh, Ephesians chapter 2, we'll start in verse 4. It says, But God, who, hath, who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace you are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, he, he quickened us. He gave us life. Uh, and he gave us the ability to choose whether or not to worship him. In, uh, in chapter 1, just one page back, Ephesians chapter 1, and uh, starting in verse uh, 4 also, in verse 4, he says, uh, According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. And in verse 6 it says, To the praise and the glory of his grace, or he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Because we've been accepted in the beloved, because of that salvation, uh, he has enabled us uh, to honor and glorify him. Because of that salvation. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's when we're unsaved, we're, we're going to serve, we're going to glorify, we're going to honor the flesh. And uh, we've had, we have a choice as Christians to, to honor and glorify him. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, uh, tells us that we're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, people. 
And, uh, and we need to show forth the, the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into this marvelous light. Uh, if you're saved today, uh, tonight, you need to show it. Uh, you need to make sure we're honoring and glorifying God because of our salvation, because of what he's done for us on the cross of Calvary. Uh, you know, what we, we need to do that to praise him because of what he's done for us. Uh, because of salvation, though, uh, what, what do we need to do in order to give praise and honor to the Lord? What do we need to do because of that? Uh, we can't skip Romans chapter 12, uh, verse 1 and 2. And we know that in verse 1 it tells us we need to present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. Uh, we need to make sure that we're presenting our bodies as part of our faithfulness that we talked about uh, in serving him. We need to present our bodies at living sacrifice. Uh, two, in Romans chapter 12, we don't need to be conformed to this world. Uh, if we're conformed to this world, we're not praising, honor, glorifying God. It says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to be transformed uh, in, in our minds so that we might glorify God uh, the way that we should. So we, we can't skip that. We need to present our bodies a living sacrifice, but, but, but when we do that, uh, that means we're going to do some things. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, and verse 15, it tells us we need to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. You know, when, when we learn God's word, we learn it well, uh, we, we, we're going to be able to do it the right way. Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. We don't have to be ashamed of, of, uh, of being a Christian. We don't have to be ashamed of, of what God's called us to do, um, but we need to know God's word, and when we know God's word, we won't be ashamed. You know, it pleases God when we listen to him, when we know his will, when we find his will in the word of God and when we listen and obey him, uh, that's going to that's gonna glorify God. And we need to be careful to do that. We need to study, as it tells us in 2 Corinthians. Uh, it, not only that, but because of our salvation, uh, we need to abide in God. You know, we've used these verses a lot, Romans chapter 12 and, and John chapter 15, uh, talking about the, uh, the vine and the branches. Uh, but in John chapter 15, we need to abide in Christ. And the Bible says, and his words abide in us. In verse 7 of John chapter 15, in verse 7 it says, And if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Wherein is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. So we need to abide in God's word. Uh, you know, there's there's some will abide in God's word. Uh, it, it promises answered prayer. It tells us we will glorify God if we abide in Him and His words abide in us. But it also says that we're going to bear much fruit. Uh, we'll bear much fruit if we abide in His word. We need to abide in God's word. You know, uh, we need to have God's words uh, in our thoughts uh, throughout the day. We need to obey it uh, as we think about it, and that's going to bring honor and glory to him. That's going to bring, bring praise to him. You know, we can't just be a, 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 a Christian when, it's, when times are good. We can't just be a Christian when things are going our way. Uh, we need to be a Christian all the time. Uh, we, need, we need to be, praise God all the time. We need to honor and glorify him with our lives all the time. And if we'll abide in God's word, it takes us down to the next one. If we'll abide in God's word, uh, we'll live God's word. If we'll abide in it, we will live it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll live God's word as we know what it says. Now, James chapter 1 and, and verse 22 tells us we need to be doers of the word only. Uh, we can't just hear the word and ignore it. If we're going to abide in his word... We're going to be doers of the word. And that goes back again to our faithfulness, our service. Uh, we're going to be doers of the word if we'll abide in God's word. And, uh, you know, it says if we're hearers only, the last part of that verse says we're deceiving our own selves. 
You know, uh, the, the, the verse that we talked about was people honoring God with their mouth and, and, uh, and worshiping with their lips. Now, they're deceiving their own selves as well as others. Uh, but we need to be doers of the word, and we can only do that as we abide in his word. Now, Matthew chapter 5, uh, and verse 16, tells we need to let your light so before men that they may see your good works and do what? Glorify your Father which is in heaven. Uh, if we'll abide in God's word, we'll be faithful to serve him, we'll live his word out in our lives. And we'll bring honor and glory to him when we do that. We're not, we're not doing it to draw attention to ourselves. We're abiding in his word. We're going we're gonna to live in his word. And uh, that's going to produce a service. That's going to produce faithfulness uh, that when others see it, they'll know it's real. And they'll honor and glorify God because of it. Uh, so we need to live God's word daily. You know, that's what, uh, that's what faith is. It's, uh, it's trusting God in to obey his word. And that's a question that we need to answer in our own lives. Do we trust God enough to obey what his word tells us to do? If we'll live in his word, if we'll abide in his word, be faithful. Uh, we'll believe it and we'll, and we'll live it. And others will see in our lives and glorify our Father which is in heaven. You know, the other thing that we uh, do, should do because of our salvation uh, to honor and glorify God is thankfulness. We need to express our thankfulness, praising God uh, with our lives, but also with our lips. Um, because he's done so He takes care of us every day. The Bible tells us he knows the number of hairs on our head. Uh, that tells me he knows a whole lot more about me and cares about me uh, than I would ever imagine. He's been so good. But he cares for us. Because of all he's done for us, uh, we need to be thankful. You know, our, our worship so, so often is, is empty of praise and thankfulness. And we need to make sure we don't get, get stuck in that, in that attitude. Uh, we need to be thankful uh, for everything that God's done. Uh, Psalm chapter 100 and verse 4 tells us we need to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Uh, we need to do that all the time. He's been so good. He does so many things for us. We need to praise him for it. So we need to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We need to be thankful unto him and bless his name, it says. Colossians in chapter 3. Colossians in chapter 3. And verse 14, Colossians 3, 14, tells us, he says, All these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And then it says, And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. We need to be thankful. We need to be thankful for everything. In everything, we need to be thankful. You know, uh, it, it's easy to not be thankful. Uh, the question we've got to ask ourselves again is, are we thankful? Uh, we need to express that thankfulness, uh, not just with our lives, but with our, with our lips. We need to make sure people know how good God is. And that uh, brings us into where we'll try to wrap it up tonight. But uh, uh, the attitude uh, that we have uh, as a Christian, the constant attitude of the believer needs to be uh, one that worship to God. That needs to be our attitude. So often we get caught up in, in this world, in this life, and the, the things of this life and, and the circumstances that we find ourselves in. You know, it's, uh, it'd be very easy uh, to get despondent, get depressed uh, over being uh, sheltered at home, uh, not being able to interact with people. Uh, fortunately, we do have uh, technology that we can use uh, to, to uh, 
to fellowship with others, to, to see other people. Um, I'm sorry that you have to look at my face, and I don't get to look at yours, but, but it is good to be able to see other people. Uh, I've been in meetings all day online on in Zoom and, and go to meeting and off teams, and you know I see everybody's face, uh, and that's good to be able to see people, but it's even better to be able to fellowship with people. Uh, but we need to make sure that when we do, we have an attitude uh, that pleases God, that honors and glorifies God. It's easy uh, to get caught up in murmuring uh, and complaining. I know nobody that's listening as gets caught up in that, uh, but, but I do. I every day getting caught up in murmuring and complaining about situations, about circumstances. Uh, you know, whether it's at work or, or just driving down the road. It's easy to get caught up in murmurings and complainings and disputings. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 14 tells us we need to do all things without murmurings and disputings. All things. And that we might shine as lights in the world. You know, people are watching us as Christians. They watch our reaction uh, to things that happen. Uh, they watch our, our uh, attitudes and uh, we need to have an attitude of thanksgiving. We need to have an attitude of worship and praise so that we do shine as lights in this world. You know, if we've got the same sorry attitude, we're not making a difference in this world like we need to. Uh, we need to get that, that uh, candle out from under the bushel. We need to hold it up uh, high in the air and let people see it. We need to shine uh, as lights in the world. And uh, we don't need to get caught up in murmurings and disputings, but uh, the attitude of our heart and our mind is what imp what's important. Uh, what is what is what is your attitude as a Christian? You know, if you expect to bring praise and honor to the Lord, you know, we need to have a good attitude. Uh, with uh, with so much pessimism in the world that we live in today, uh, we need to be careful to maintain that daily attitude of praise, uh, because. Uh, not because things are good, not because circumstances are good necessarily, but always good. And, uh, you know, our flesh, our sinful nature, uh, and, and of course Satan are opposed to uh, uh, Christians maintaining an attitude of honor and glory to God. Now, they're opposed to that. And uh, if, if something, if, if the devil's opposed to something, I'm definitely for it. And we need to honor and glorify God. We need to have the right attitude. Uh, you know, there are three uh, kinds of attitudes. Uh, if you, you look in Revelations chapter 3, he talks about those three kinds of attitude. Uh, it says in, uh, in Revelation chapter 3, starting in verse 15, uh, it says, Jesus said, I know thy works, that they are neither hot nor cold. I would that they were cold or hot. Verse 16 says, So then because thou art lukewarm, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Uh, the three different attitudes that we see in those verses, of course, are cold attitude. Uh, cold attitude, you know, one that's unthankful, one that's angry or bitter or a rejecting attitude, a cold attitude. When you see that, God says, I wish you would, were cold or hot. And, of course, hot attitude is, of course, rejoicing and thankful all the time, uh, fervently serving uh, with a cheerful heart, as the Bible tells us, we need to do all things as unto the Lord. Uh, that's the hot attitude, but uh, he pinpoints in these verses a lukewarm attitude. Uncaring or apathetic, unconcerned. And so often, uh, Christians uh, show that kind of attitude. When we absolutely don't care about the person that we see every day, on their way to hell. We don't witness to them. Uh, that's a lukewarm attitude. And, by, and the Bible says here in Revelation that God said, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Uh, make God, it makes God sick to his stomach to think about uh, a Christian with a, a lukewarm attitude. Uh, we need to be hot. We need to be on fire for God with an attitude of thankfulness, an attitude of uh, rejoicing attitude. Uh, when we serve God with all of our heart, knowing that it's uh, him we serve, it's not the world around us. It's not our boss at work. Uh, we serve God. We need to do it with a cheerful heart, uh, with a good attitude, uh, so that we can bring honor and glory to God himself. You know, sometimes as Christians, we need to stop 
and we need to rethink our attitude. Sometimes maybe we need to retrain our mind uh, to think on the things that honor God. Uh, Philippians in chapter 4 and verse 8 uh, tells us that we need to think on things that are, are true. We need to think on things that are honest and just and pure and of good report. We need to concentrate on the things that, that promote virtue and promote praise. Uh, as Christians, we need to focus on these things. You know, uh, the act of God is based upon uh, our choice to have the right attitude. You know, I, we, talk, we started uh, talking about uh, people worshiping with their mouth, with their lips, uh, but not with the heart. So from the, in their heart, they're far from me. Their heart is far from me. Uh, that's an attitude. We need to make sure we have the right attitude. You know, Philippians 4, it's a good, of a good verse. My wife and I were talking about it earlier this week. We're talking about the things that we need to think about. Now, we don't need to think about the coronavirus, and we don't need to think about uh, the bad things in this world. You know, there is a lot of bad things going on. But again, God's good. We need to think about the things that are good, pure, and holy, and just, and right. And have that attitude uh, of praise and worship to God. Uh, in our lives as Christians, so that we can honor and glorify Him. Because that's the way that we're going to do it, is with the attitude uh, that God is good. God's good all the time. And no matter what the circumstances, He's promised to go through those circumstances with us, and He'll bring us out on the other end stronger and better for His honor, for His glory. Just keep that attitude of thankfulness, the attitude of praise and worship. And uh, we, we can have our own personal worship in our own hearts, in our own lives, no matter where we are, whether we're at home, uh, separated from our friends, uh, whether we're at work with uh, 12 people around us, uh, we can have personal worship when we realize how good God is, when we realize what he's done for us. And uh, the circumstances around us uh, are just for a short time. The problems that we face the Bible tells us are not worthy to be compared to the glory that we'll see when we get to heaven. And you know what? Heaven is sweeter every day uh, because God's there, because friends and family are there. And we need to realize how good God is, and we need to have that attitude of praise and worship because of that. We need to have that attitude of thankfulness because of what God has done for us so that others can see our good work, our Father which is in heaven. That's the goal. Uh, that we bring honor and glory to him. Glorify God with your life by serving him and being faithful with what God's blessed you with. So let's be faithful, let's serve God, let's praise him, and let's be thankful for what he's done for us. He's been so good to us. Uh, next time we get together, we'll talk about how we can personal praise and worship to God. You know, a lot of people don't have any idea what worship is. A lot of people don't know what it is. Uh, it's not, you know, listening to a song and raising your hand and swaying back and forth. Uh, it's, it's not with your lips and with your mouth, uh, but it's in the heart. And you can worship God and nobody else have any idea that that's what's going on. Um, they will if you do it constantly because you will have that attitude. But let, we'll talk about next time developing your personal praise and worship. But uh, until then, let's be faithful in our service. Let's be faithful to praise him and glorify him. And that's going to honor him. And uh, that's worship. That's what worship is. So let's close in a word of prayer. Appreciate everybody tuning in. And uh, let everybody know that these, uh, these uh, lessons are online here and uh, they get a chance to go back and look at them. And uh, hopefully the word of God and the Holy Spirit can touch hearts and lives and change people. And that's our goal. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we are thankful. For your goodness to us we thank you for the opportunity and the privilege we have to open the word of god we're thankful for the holy spirit that teaches us instructs us and directs us in the things that we need to do and as we talked about tonight the worship help us to worship you in spirit and in truth and to honor and glorify you to be faithful in our service to you so that people might see our good works and glorify our father which is in heaven that should be our goal as Christians. Pray what you touch hearts, touch lives. If there is someone that's not saved, they might see their need of salvation. And they might confess their sins and uh, ask God to come into their heart and save them before it's eternally too late. And we'll thank you for what you do for us. 
keep us safe, watch over our families. Uh, pray this coronavirus will be over soon. We'll be able to get back together face to face and fellowship one with another. And I pray that you just bless and everything that we do. We might put you first. And we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again for tuning in. Well, God bless all of you. And we'll get back with you next uh, Sunday morning at 10 o'clock for Sunday school. And don't forget our other services are online as well. And uh, we have a 7 o'clock Bible study every night on Facebook. Brother Matt and uh, Brother David. So don't forget to tune in those as well. Thank you for listening. Y'all have a good evening. Good